This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. This lesson is on displaying data into an HTML table from a file that we're going to read in PHP. We're really starting to use the power of PHP now to do something dynamic. Let's look at this form. Simple enough, I've just got the first name and last name. And it's going to add names to a list. And we're going to be able to see this list get added to as we go through each iteration of a form. Let me enter my name first, Steve Perry. I'm going to add name. So it says added to file, but it also showed me this very lovely little HTML table. Let's go back and add another name. Uh, let's not add me again. Bob Smith. Add name. Now I get Bob Smith. All right, let's do one more. Jane Jones. Another add. There I am. Now I have a nice table here, and notice I've got some alternating background colors here. There's a little technique for doing that that I'm going to show you. On a simple table like this, it probably doesn't make much difference, but on a longer table that has many cells within each row, it can really help guide your eyes to the data that's associated with key data on each row. So let's go ahead and look at some code now. Here's the HTML. Nothing you haven't seen before. First name, last name, and a submit button. Let's go to the PHP. Up at the top, I'm going to gather the data from the form. I get the first name and last name using the post. I'm going to set the server, the document root. I'm going to use the dollar underscore server to get the document root. And then I'm going to set up the file name to be something called nameless.txt. Okay. Now, I set the file name all the way up here at the top because I'm going to both write to it and I'm going to read from it. But it's going to be the same file each time, so I don't need to repeat that setup in every block of code that I have here. Now notice I'm using these little comment blocks at the top and labeling the areas of code. This is a good practice to do to kind of keep things isolated so you know what's going on in your program. Now later we're going to learn how to write custom functions to be able to block the code in a more formal way. So let's go up. The next comment block is to add the name information to the file. So we have to open the file. Let's open the file name and we're going to open it appending, small a. That's going to allow us to not wipe out the data we already have, but every time we run this and we add a new name, we add it to the bottom of our file. So. Now, remember on the F right, I like to write to the pointer and format an output line to be written. Let's look at this output line above that I formatted it. It's a little bit different. I have the last name, and before the first name, in the middle of it, I have a pipe symbol between little ticks, right? Tick, pipe, tick. So I'm putting a pipe symbol between the last name and the first name, as well as a pipe symbol after the first name. And then at the end, remember, if I want to have one line written at a time, I have to use the new line symbol, the backslash little n, between double quotes. So I appended that to the output line, so it would be just like we hit the return key with our hands. Now, why did I bother sticking these pipes between the last name and first name? This is a little technique that's called delimiting the text. I'm delimiting the values in a string, or a text line, with this symbol that I want to use to break it up. I don't know how long a last name is going to be. Some last name might be Lee, some last names are Perry, some are Jones, some are Raghunathapuram. It doesn't matter. We don't know what the last name is going to be. So we have to find a way to separate the last name and first name from each other. Now we're going to use this symbol in a little bit later code to pull out the last name and the first name again and display them on the table. So this is a real simple little technique to do to be able to delimit text, and then I'll show you how to use that delimiter to get the text back out again. All right, so we write the line. Now, notice I'm not doing this inside of a loop. I'm just writing one line because my form just had one bit of information. Let's go back. I just had Jane Jones. I had a first name and a last name. So I'm not looping through anything, so I only need to write it once. So write it. and. I close it. Well, that was quick. Write the file, close the file. It's important that I close it again because I'm going to open it again to read it. 
right after closing it. So I print another heading here. Now in the heading, I put the last name, first name added to the file. You saw that when we ran it. So you could see it would report back to you the very last person that was entered. So now we're going to go and read the name information from a file and put it into that HTML table. You may recall from an earlier lesson, I showed you how to set up a table with a border of one. That gave us the borderline we could see. Let's go back. I don't want to add the same person again. So I'll have a Jane Smith. Add that again. So here we have, see this borderline around here is from border one. Let's go back. So border one. Now I'm going to put the headings on there, the last name and first name that you saw up here. Last name, first name, they'll be bolded. And I use the TH tag and the NTH tag for each one of those. All right, now we get to the main PHP block. I set up a display area with an empty string. Whenever you have a quote, quote with nothing in it, or a single quote, single quote with nothing between it, that's called an empty string. Why don't I put a little comment in there? And that can be useful. I'm going to use this dollar display variable for some information later, but I need to initialize it to empty. I also have a line counter, CTR, short for counter, and I'm setting that to zero. Now I'm going to open the file name, and I'm opening it for reading again with a little r. Now I don't know how many lines are in this file when this program runs. So I know I just added one line, but I don't know how many lines were in there before whenever I run this. I've got the while true again, so this is an infinite loop, but I'm going to break out of it. Now here's how you do that with a file. Remember I F gets it, which gets me one line of the file into a dollar line. Before I do anything else, every time I do an F gets, I set up a condition where it can maybe be at the end of file. And that's what EOF means. That means end of file. So F EOF is file at end of file. This is a PHP function. You can look this up on php.net and read more about it. But I've got to pass to it the file pointer, which is in $FP. Now, if it is at the end of the file, when I read it with the F gets, it'll know that. I don't have to do anything more than run this function. And if it detects that this is true, remember all comparisons, true or false, it'll break out of there. And I'm done with the loop. I'm not going to try to process a line from the file that I haven't read. I'm at the end. So that'll get us out of this loop because eventually we're going to be out of this file. Now, line counter. Bumped it up by one. If you may recall, in this case, I started with a line counter of zero. So now line counter is equal to one. Now here's a little technique I'm going to use to kind of keep track of alternate rows. Remember I had different colors on the rows. In fact, I'll go back and show you. I had a little bit different color. I had white, and then I had a, a lighter yellow on each alternate row. So I'm going to show you how that's done. I take the line counter, which is either going to be like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, depending on what's going on, and I divide it by 2, but when I use the percent sign, that's the modulo or modulus, and it's going to return the remainder. So when the remainder is 0, I know I'm on an even numbered line, because 2 will go into 2, to 4, to 6, it'll go in evenly, so the remainder will be 0. So I can use that if line counter remainder is equal to zero. I can use that to set the style background color to be this sort of soft yellow. When it's not zero, that means it's an odd number, and I'm going to set the background color to be white. Look at this carefully. This is a style. This is HTML code that you put in an inline style. Style equals, I give the attribute name, background color with a hyphen, colon, and then the color attribute value, either with a pound sign or if it's a simple color, we can just specify the name. So I'm passing all that. Notice I have single quotes here and here because that's part of the HTML that has to be set. It's part of the whole string that's found between the two double quotes. So you got to get kind of used to delineating when you're writing out attribute values in HTML because this kind of thing can really mess you up and cause you errors. So just be on guard for that. Likewise, I did the same thing down here. The single quotes are part of the string, falling between the double quotes. Now, I put all of that in a dollar style variable. I could have called it anything. It just made sense to call it dollar style to me, so I remember what it is. 
I'm going to skip this line and I'll come back to it. Down here in the TR that I write out, which is a new row, I put the dollar style right on it. And since it's between double quotes, it'll go ahead and expand that to be either this one or this one. So it'll work. And you saw it work. You saw how the colors alternated. Now, I'm writing out the row with a style, and I'm writing out two cells of data, the last name, the first name, and then I end the row. And on this row, at the end of the row, I'm putting a new line character on there. So when I do a view page source, if I'm looking for any problems and I need to see what HTML was generated, it'll make it line up a lot nicer. It's a lot easier to read. Let's go back to that line I skipped. This is very important. Remember, we always process stuff to the right of the equal sign first. This is called explode. It's an interesting name for a function, but what it does is it looks at line, which is the line we pulled back. Let me go back up a little bit. This is where we read. We use the fgets to get the line from the file. It looks at that line, and it's looking for that delimiter, that pipe, and it says, break it up. That's what explode means. It breaks it up into parts. Now, I know I had a last name, pipe, and a first name, pipe. And you have to put that extra pipe on the last one or the explode doesn't work properly. And so it returns to me everything broken into its parts now based on that. Now, there's a special function called the list function. And I put in parentheses the two variables I wanted to receive from the explosion, so to speak, the breaking up of the delimited string. I knew it was in last name, comma, first name, order. So I knew this would work. So it'll receive it into these single variables by doing that. So try this out. Make sure you go through this and see this work for yourself. So that's why last name and first name are there, because I got them from the line and I broke it up into its parts again. Let's go down. I close the file again. Notice here, I did not print these things out immediately like I've done on many of the files in the past. Instead, I put everything into a dollar display variable. And the period equals appends information into the display. So this just keeps adding and adding and adding to the dollar display. So I'm getting the whole table, the table, the rows, everything in there. And then at the very end of the program, I print the dollar display and it prints all the rows. So this allows me, if I want to do something in between there in some way, I can do that. I get a little bit more flexibility by saving it off in a variable and printing it at the end. And then you have the end table tag, the end div, and body and HTML. And that's it. That ends our lesson on displaying data from a file in PHP into an HTML table.